Yo, what's up guys? It's me, Mad McMahon. I say that every single time, but this time I'm back in the flesh to show you some stuff that I got from Timu. In fact, a lot of stuff because I think I might have an addiction. Swear to God, I think I do. As you'll see as we go along, there's way too much shit that I bought since the last time I've seen you. And first thing I should note is that this is one of the things I have bought. It's a freaking pair of headphones. Let me take them off for you right now. Here you go. Uh, these are uh, Shure uh, SRH440s. The originals, not the A variety. In fact, uh, this actually uh, came from Japan. It came from Sugurugaya. And I'm not going to bother with the chart because, truth be told, this, at this point, uh, I mostly buy stuff on Sugurugaya when they have the free shipping of, uh, promotion available, which has been quite often recently. It's actually twice happened. Uh, there's, like, there's like one thing I bought recently that did not have uh, freaking uh, shipping uh, free, but I don't really give a shit because I know a lot Last time kind of went on and on with this chart bullshit but I'm not gonna do that this time because charts are for losers and also because I'm lazy anywho these are one of the things that I bought and uh funny thing is you're gonna see a lot of audio stuff that goes on uh during this uh in this little excursion because I did buy a lot of audio equipment and I also bought a lot of pins spoiler I know uh so let's continue onward and upward to the next part of the video yeah, I forgot to mention, I should probably record um, me talking about the headphones in some sort of review, you know, because that's part of the video. You know, you have to review stuff. So let me actually review it. This comes in four parts. It comes in the headphones themselves, the detachable cable, which comes off like this. You know, it proves I'm not listening to anything right now. Uh, and uh, also it comes with a Shure bag as well as this audio thing, which I have like four of now. I'm not even kidding. And uh, one thing you can do with these headphones headphones is once you take them off you can uh freaking fold them up like com sa i say like com sa but it's actually just com sa without the like it's like saying like like so it's kind of weird anyway here we go silly me i actually forgot to talk about the sound quality of the headphones they're very bright they're way nicer than my freaking uh akg 240s uh my samson's broke yet again so i'm never getting them ever again they suck build quality wise this actually is a nice build quality they do sort of get uncomfortable after a while i mean you do have to constantly readjust to get the proper sound and on top of that i can already see it sort of malfunctioning at some point due to the uh moving parts that you have to work with as opposed to the akgs which is usually just you know plop it on and that's it but that's a trade-off because obviously you lose portability um i got these uh for 49 which uh you know even though it was used it was like one of those situations where it was basically out of the box someone just opened it uh very carefully i listened to it once didn't like it and put it back in the box and returned it so it was essentially new it looked like it had never even been touched because that's how japanese used stuff works either they're really bad quality and they're beat up to all hell or they're basically brand new is the way it works because they don't have a distinction like on websites like ebay or amazon that say that something is you know very good or something is acceptable or something is just good they don't have that they just have used and new that's how they distinguish things so there you go and these are closed backs unlike my previous headphones which are open backs so therefore, it's hard to really hear out of these as well as other headphones. Hey guys, you may have noticed that I'm wearing headphones, but where's the freaking cord? In fact, it's right here. Here's the cord. I got a brand new one because the other one was too manky and gross. And so I got a nice one. So there you go. That's all I have to say about that. Can't believe it took me like however many fucking tries just to get this done. But anyway, here's a pair. Fuck. And fucking tangled again. Anyway, here's a pair of IEMs. As you can tell, I'm quite irritated right now because I haven't been able to record jack shit. I've been recording in one to two minute intervals, and most of it's just fluff. Anyway, seriously, this shit sucks. Uh, the cord, uh, by the way, for this is USB Type C, and it's a freaking nightmare to get untangled. I swear to God. These are nice. These only cost the actual things attached to the cord. The cord was like, I don't know how many dollars. I don't remember. Freaking things that are attached to them, I think are like $13, maybe less. Anyway, this is nice and all. But I'll tell you what's really nice. What's really nice is this less tangly corded mess. That being a freaking KZ, whatever the fuck as well. I'll put up the names on screen and I'll probably have to edit a 
fuck ton of this video, seriously. These have brand new memory foam tips, by the way, and the cord is nice as well, but it's uh, it's it's stock. Those are planar magnetics, they sound pretty nice. The KZ, whatever the fuck with the metal backing is the one I showed you before, they sound better than the ones that I showed you in the last Timu video, if you remember all the way back then. Those sound nice, but these freaking uh, planar magnetic ones sound freaking even better. Here's the memory foam tips, um, by the way, ones that I have on mine are the biggest ones they have, otherwise they get stuck in my ear. I know it sounds counterintuitive, with a bigger one, wouldn't that get stuck? Whatever. I guess I have big ear holes. Who cares? Or maybe small ones. I don't know. I'm not an ear magician. Oh yeah, by the way, the fucking braided cord that makes a million bajillion messes has a microphone. Yo, what's up guys? I'm back on a brand new day. First up are these metal uh, little things that you put into auxiliary cords to make them from 3.5 to uh, I think like a quarter inch. I don't remember the exact specifications. I can put it up on screen like I put up everything on screen. Uh, basically, um, yeah, it's something that you just plug into uh, various auxiliary jacks and you plug them into a port and you can uh, use them in various devices that use bigger ones and they work quite well. Next up is something that I use quite frequently on my computer. Right now it is not on my computer, but it is a freaking splitter cord that splits from two uh, females to one male or one male to two females more aptly and uh, it's used to uh, plug in both my speakers so I can alternate between both of them because I like both of them and one of them was given to me one of them I bought so I thought you know what might as well use both of them um yeah there you go uh, so there's that Moving on from one audio accessory to another, it's a freaking reverse splitter. This one takes one female and makes it into two males. Funny that. And I think it looks quite good. It runs quite well. Finally, when it comes to this round of recording for audio, we have an audio extension cable, one that you plug into various devices to extend the length of the cable. It has four notches on it right here, if you notice, actually has three notches and four sections. The reason why that is, is you have headphones with, with a microphone, you can use both the microphone and the headphones if you plug into something that, that, that takes both into one cord, otherwise use that, that splitter separates the two inputs into two separate auxiliary uh, plugs. Hello guys, new day, new hat, what's up baby? Today we have the arduous task of showing you 30 goddamn pins that I bought from Timu. Yes, that's right, 30 goddamn pins. Let's get started. So first, before I show you any pin, I actually got these backings, these nice sort of locking backings. I got like about 30 of them, or actually less than 30, like 25 or 20 or some shit. Basically, yeah, I got a whole bunch of them so I could lock them onto the back of various pins. First up, by the way, when it comes to pins, is a 9-inch nails pin. Really nice quality. Um, overall, it's one of the better pins that I own. Next up, again, this is in no particular order of when I actually got them. Trust me when it comes to that. Next up is Reptar. Reptar is right here and he's ready to pounce. Ready to fuck. Pretty good if I, was, if I do say so myself. Sorry if I'm brief on these ones. I have 30 to go through or 28 at this point. Let's keep going. Next up is Jeff Goldblum to first Jurassic Park. And this was a uh, decent quality, not the best quality. But I haven't worn it yet so I don't know if it's bulky on the shirt or anything like that but it, it looks good on the pin board. Next up is Rockstar Games. Look it's Rockstar Games logo. And this one looks very nice. One of the nicer pins I own, like I said before. And overall, I'm very happy with this one, and I have worn this one. This one's pretty nice to wear. Next up is the Doom floppy disk pin. It's the Doom logo on a floppy disk on one of those, you know, three and a quarter as opposed to, you know, the other one. The hard floppy disk as opposed to the soft floppy disks. People not in the know may think this is a save icon, but it's a floppy disk. Because believe it or not, games just come on things besides the Steam platform. When it comes to PC, that is. When it comes to PC, that is. Next up is the N64 logo. And I don't know if these are the right colors because you usually you know companies mess up the right colors but uh yeah it's pretty nice it's pretty dark as you can see i wish it was a little bit brighter that's no big deal when it comes to color palette next up is a really nice quality pin one of my favorites actually it's the initial d trueno trueno pin it's a really nice quality pin it's it, it's got a different texture and material than the other pins it definitely feels more like a high quality sort of like straight from a manufacturer as opposed to like a chinese factory vibe even though it is actually from a chinese factory next up is one one that is not as high quality as the other one. It's a Ditto from Pokemon. And this one is pretty, eh, it's all right quality. One of those ones where they fill it in with like these little uh, paints that stick to metal sort of thing, as opposed to a full on print. It's a Bazinga. It's a Bazinga. 
lightning bolt that I'm assuming goes with the flash, or it could just be a generic lightning bolt. I don't know. It's pretty nice. Anyway, speaking of generic shit, it's the club symbol, which I use quite a lot throughout my channel and throughout my Steam page and throughout various things because I think it looks like a mutt paw. Yeah, because my name's Mutt Mondo. There you go. Next up is one that does not have uh, the cool backing because I ran out. It's a uh, freaking Emperor's New Groove sort of llama potion that happens throughout the movie. If you've seen the movie, you know what's up. Next up is a big one. It's a big boy. It's a Sheikah Slate. And this one is yeah, it's decent quality. I mean, the print is all right. It's mostly metal. Speaking of video game stuff, it's the froggy chair from Animal Crossing. Yes, indeed, it's the froggy chair. This one is the only set of pins that I believe it or not did not get from Timu. This one is an Animal Crossing one, an Animal Crossing logo. This one is a Metroid, I forget the name of it, a screw attack. It's a screw attack logo from Metroid. And uh, this is the Earth symbol from Mother. And this, this is part of a Smash set. I was only able to get one part of the Smash set. And there's two others that had three other pins in the set for a total of six pins that I don't own, but these ones I picked out because I thought these are the three franchises I'd love to represent on my pin board or my shirt. So there you go. Um, These ones were from Shark Robot. They were on clearance. So I don't think you can get them now or maybe you can. I don't know. Next up is a money symbol from Animal Crossing. Speak of the devil, we just showed an Animal Crossing thing. It's pretty nice, not the best. Speaking of uh, things that are not the best, this one is definitely not the best. It's the Berserk pin. I'm pretty sure it's the worst pin I own. It's plastic, got paint all over it. You can't really see it very well, but trust me, it's shit. I got a refund on that one because that one was definitely not worth the money I paid for it. The one that was worth the money I paid for it is, is a sequel to one I showed in the last Demon video. It's, it's from the same set. It's a freaking uh, like body horror thing from this one mangaka, I forget his name, but he wrote Uzumaki. It's from a different manga series by the same author. Speaking of Uzumaki, we have the, the freaking girl from Uzumaki. You know, the famous one, the one that everyone sees, you know, the first thing when they look up Uzumaki. Uh, it's getting around Halloween time, so I should be finishing up um, Uzumaki sometime soon, hopefully. Hopefully I don't put it off because I'm a wiener, you know. Next up is uh, freaking Nier Automata. I, ha I do actually own this game. I played a little bit of it, so I'm not a poser but this one I, I like to be what can i say and this one is a really nice one really nice quality one i don't remember how much i paid for any of these pins but i think that one probably was a little bit more expensive if i were to guess this one i don't know if it was expensive either but this one is a freaking uh, guardian from legend of zelda breath of the wild yes indeed it's a freaking guardian and it's a nice quality same quality as the sheikah slate i would say this one is decent it's got some scuffs and buffs it's just kind of a poor quality skull one with a giant you know giant skull hole in it, it's sort of a cartoon skull. It, it's just a generic design. I'm sure, it's a reference to something, which you know, God knows, I don't associate with whatever it is. I do associate with Pokemon. This one's a Pokemon pin of Ash, as well as Pikachu from Pokemon Yellow, or I guess his name is Red or Yellow or whatever. And basically, he's on a Game Boy, a generic Game Boy. Here is one that I got a refund on because it wasn't the highest quality, and it's a Chemical X pin because the paint quality is very poor on this one. Chemical X, you know, from Powerpuff Girls. Next up is one that I didn't get a refund on. This one, oddly enough, has two backings on it. It's it's a Gundam pin. It's one of a generic sort of Gundam. I'm pretty sure it's the one that It's a Gundam uses for his profile picture. Shout out It's a Gundam. And again, it's one where it's pretty freaking nice. Uh, we're down to four pins at this point. Next up is freaking Cuphead. It's the hot, hot snake lady with, it, with just her bare head. And uh, this one is pretty accurate to the source material. Next up is the MF Doom pin. Yes, I have another MF Doom thing. Besides the King Ghidorah CD, which I showed in one of my previous videos, actually on an MF Doom pin, which you can't really see very well, but in the Doom it actually says MF. And finally, we have two more. We have To Be Continued from JoJo, that classic pin representing that classic meme from the internet back in the good old days when the internet was cool, back in the good old year of 2016. God bless 2016. And finally, we have Slurm, Slurm indeed from Futurama. That's all the pins, and I can't believe that took almost 10 minutes to get through all those pins. Jesus. Hi, guys. Uh, this took me a long ass time to set up because apparently my microphone just decided to stop working and to restart my computer. First up on the menu is a GAN 3x3 non-magnetic Rubik's Cube. Yes, indeed. It's a 3x3 non-magnetic Rubik's Cube. Uh, it's stickerless, which I like quite a lot. And uh, this is the first 3x3 I've had in a very long time. And it's probably one of the best that I've ever had. Like, honestly, it is such good quality. It is such a ridiculous 
seriously good quality. I play with it all the freaking time. And I got it for like mega cheap on Timu because it was like one of those things where you, you get it for a certain percentage off, but then you apply this like extra discount that makes it even more cheap. And it was freaking fan freaking tastic. And of course, uh, I, I messed it up. Of course I did. Uh, who cares? I'll just scramble it and solve it later. I solved it with two layers and then I just fixed the third layer by put, putting apart put, taking apart and putting it back together because I refuse to learn algorithm. That's how life works. Anyway, I'll be sure to do that off camera. Next up is this Goodwill keyboard, but you may notice that a few things are different. First of all, the keys are different. And second of all, I installed the rubber rings. I bought more rubber rings and this is what it sounds like now. Look at this. Sounds like this, and uh, I also rerouted it so that when you press one of the buttons, instead of doing Windows, it does like a Control Delete, which is pretty freaking cool. And uh, yeah, that's all the changes I made to this keyboard. It's pretty freaking nice. It took forever to install the uh, rubber rings, but once I did, I'm quite happy with the result. I got the keys from, from Timu as well, and I think they're pretty nice as well. They're nicer than the keys that actually came on the keyboard because they actually don't scratch off the letters. They're actually built into the plastic, which is how it should be. This is from Timu as well. It's an 8-bit do wired uh, pro controller sort of thing. It has back buttons that you might or might not be able to hear. It has triggers. It has X, Y, A, B. Um, it has remappable things on PC. It has, you know, all sorts of nice stuff on PC, but on Switch, it's sort of a limited controller. Not the best uh, when it comes to that. It doesn't even have a screenshot button, which is really damn irritating, which I don't like. But the fact it has the button for it, but it doesn't work on Switch. Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, I have to redo a part of the video that you didn't see because my dog Emmett was whining outside of my door and also a part of the uh, recording fucked up which is awesome. Emmett's a cute little baby he's only he's only one years old and he just likes attention he wants to be with his owner he doesn't want to be separate he's a cute little baby. One of the things I forgot to show in my previous recording was this cable right here it's a USB uh, micro cable it's one that I used for my PS4 uh, controller as well as my Steam controller and any other controller that uses that input and it's quite nice. It's actually one I got from Timu and I'm pretty happy with the result. It has uh, has a charging cable uh, aspect to it where it turns orange if it's charging and it turns white if it's not. It doesn't exactly work on PC because it constantly thinks it's charging. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be, I don't know. Next up is some Amiibo. I actually referenced the Amiibo in a previous video that I was ordering it for Tears of the Kingdom and here they are. And since then, I actually ordered a booster pack that fills up every single amiibo that is compatible with Tears of the Kingdom. All of them are in here. The only one that didn't work uh, from the original package was uh, Mifa. Mifa did not work, so I had to, I had to go get it from my old set. Uh, and I sold the rest of my brother Will, and he paid ten dollars. Pretty pretty fair price for him, I think. I think I, I think we had a good deal going on there. And uh, yeah, I use it for Tears of the Kingdom, and it's pretty fun to use. It feels like cheating, but who cares? If they're gonna lock content behind a bunch of uh, pieces of plastic. I'm gonna buy those pieces of plastic bootleg for super cheap. And finally, something that you may think is sort of useless, but it actually isn't. It's a Nintendo Switch grip with a cable sticking out of it. And you may think, why is that? The more useless ability is that you can uh, charge your uh, Joy-Cons while they're out by plugging them into the dock. But a, a less useless feature is that you can actually uh, plug the uh, Joy-Cons into here and then plug plug the actual port into your PC and, and use uh, your Joy-Cons on your PC. So I have like, what, like eight controllers at this point that can plug into PC? I don't know. I mean, when I'm ever gonna use this, maybe a player or multiplayer, I don't know. I mean, I don't think that's ever gonna happen, but I just love Love me some controllers. I'm a controller fanatic. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm back again uh, for the last potential segment. Now, keep in mind, I have two games coming in right now, so I might tack those on at the end. I also, funny enough, order from Limited Run again. It makes me a giant hypocrite, I know. And that Strictly Limited game, which I mentioned before, has still not come in, which, uh, again, uh, to be expected. So, this video is turning into a CDs and Switch games video. Let's get started with a Switch game in no particular order. First up is Trials of Mana. Yes, indeed, the Trials of Mana game, the sequel to uh, Secret of Mana, and the and the and the spiritual successor slash remake of the game that was originally exclusive to Japan on the Super Nintendo or Super Famicom, as it's known over there. It's a good game. I haven't played much of it, but I'm surprised I got it for as cheap as I did. It was like fifteen dollars, which is insane to me. That like this game, which is 
pretty high quality and believe it or not it comes with that little bitty piece of paper that all the Square Enix games come with and it's perfectly fine I think it's a great game I think it's honestly pretty good I'm surprised it's that cheap and it looks pretty good on switch it plays pretty good I mean overall I mean I don't know why they priced it so cheap but I'll take it I'll take it bro trust me next up is a game I actually did get from Timu it's uh Luigi's Mansion 3 the the Hong Kong version I got this for pretty damn cheap considering how much it usually goes for and I'm pretty into it I'm not too far into it keep in mind I had a save file from my library uh, copy before so I, I I just transferred over my save to that this copy and I'm I'm rolling now but overall it's it's pretty decent you know um, I'm having a good old green old time and uh, I'm learning the ins and outs I'm learning the secrets I'm learning learning the game again and, and overall I'm pretty happy with it uh, the graphics are beautiful by the way the graphics are absolutely gorgeous for switch one of the best looking games on switch that I've seen like seriously it is gorgeous and uh, overall it is a great art style I'm not not to the part with Guiji who's right here by the way not to his part yet I'm looking forward to that I'm looking forward to the mechanics that they're gonna add later on in the game and I'm especially going to look forward to the desert level. That's going to be cool as hell. But I'm pretty early on, so I haven't encountered any wacky wild times yet. We're gonna go with one more game. I know that's kind of not how we typically do CDs and Switch games, but at this point, I thought might as well, considering we have way more games than we do CDs. We only have four CDs at this point, so let's go with uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It's a great game. It's indeed the Hong Kong version. I also got it from Temu or Timu, however the hell you say it. It's uh, pretty good. I also bought the booster course, you know, if you will, the booster course pack. And uh, yeah, I'm having a great time with it. I'm mostly playing uh, the time trial, racing ghosts. Pretty fun. I've not played online because I suck. Let's be real. I, I, I play with uh, I play with like auto steer because I'm just fucking terrible otherwise. You know, I'm more of a Sonic All All Stars team racing kind of guy anyway when it comes to being good at games. I'm not playing the battle mode, which I hear is really good, but I, I will play that eventually. I still don't have friends is the thing. I don't have friends to play the shit with. But yeah, I am pretty happy with this. It is, uh, even though it is the Hong Kong version, you can play perfectly in English. It basically converts to the American version, no problemo. Now we are finally on to the first CD. And the first CD is Hit Parade by Roisin Murphy. I believe that's how you say your name, Roisin. This comes with a uh, little booklet with all sorts of uh, lyrics and goodies and whatnot. And the other one, we have the CD itself, which is a very cheaply made, very much like budget CD, which is what you get with all these American CDs. Japanese CDs are way higher budget, way better in my opinion. Like America's you know, into that. They're like let's save the environment, not use as much plastic. And let's use, but the shit doesn't last. Not to mention you're already wasting plastic when it comes to making CDs in the first place. Just, just commit to making a, a, a clamshell case, like Jesus. It's kind of a YouTube poop element to it. I'm not even kidding, by the way. Like the elements of editing definitely remind me of something that I would see in like early YouTube poops. It's one of those things where um, I kind of laugh sometimes, but it's very trippy, very weird. The best track is probably the first one that she released, which is Cool. But uh, the other tracks are not too bad either. And uh, they're very weird. And it's not exactly something that I can listen to consistently. But the one time I did listen to it all the way through, I had a great time. So something that I definitely like, and I, and I like the fact that I have preserved it onto uh, onto my computer, if you will. Move on to another game, and this game is one that's a little bit beat up. I apologize because when I stored it, I, I fucked it up. It's Pocky and Rocky Reshrined, and this one doesn't come with a manual, but I'll tell you what it does come with: stickers! Yay, stickers! Yeah, Pocky and Rocky Reshrined. It's it's a uh, it's a it's a remake. It had to be a remake because they don't have the original source code for Pocky and Rocky, so they made a, a full-on remake and reimagining of Pocky and Rocky. Uh, Natsume Atari did and they released it uh, physically for very cheap I got it for like 20 bucks and on top of that it's pretty good um, it's, it's hard as hell though and you can't even unlock the lower difficulty until you beat the game and it has like I think it has unlimited continues but you have to beat a stage in order to save your, where you are it's very annoying but uh, yeah I mean I'll, I'll get through it eventually maybe I'll, maybe I'll get a friend to join me again no friends but maybe I'll get a friend maybe we'll go through it cooperatively I don't know it's known as Kiki Kai Kai in Japan which I, th I always find really funny and really, really fun to say. Kiki Kakai. But it's known as Pocky and Rocky in the West. Moving on to another CD. It's one of two of these kinds of CDs. So I'm going to do this one and then I'm going to do another game. And then I'm going to do the other part of the set. This one is, I believe, uh, Toho Eurobeat High. It's, uh, it's Toho Eurobeat High. And it comes with the sparkly little, uh, little uh, manual as well as... 
when you open it up it comes with uh, a little thing a little a little manual and uh, the CD itself which is all pretty nice and uh, it's Toho Eurobeat it's two things that I love Eurobeat I love initial Lee and all that stuff just the pure aesthetic of it and I love Toho although I'm not the kind of guy who like gets obsessed obsessed over the little girl characters I just like the music I just like the visuals and I like the shoot em up aspects that's all I like about it I like bullet hells I have nothing to do with the whole plot I think the whole plot aspect is really I think basically anybody who really takes it seriously really needs to get a life and it's gonna come from somebody who has no life so that that means something especially I think because you have less of a life than I do and I have no life this one has uh, 10 tracks and the next one I'm gonna show you from Toho Your Beat has nine tracks although the songs are decently long and they're in pretty high quality it's let me read it out Jojo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle R and the R stands for I said it earlier in the recording Jojo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle R is a hard title to say, but it's also a good fighting game. It's one that's a 2D fighting game, but I was expecting it to be a little bit more 3D, but it's not. It's your typical CyberConnect sort of Bamco uh, fighting game, anime fighter, if you will. There's 50 playable characters, which would mean something if I actually know what the fuck JoJo is and what it's about. I barely do as it stands. I mean, I know the music references. I know I know that certain plot elements that have gotten spoiled to me over the years. But overall, um, I don't really know much about the game. I just like fighting games, and I like, like JoJo's aesthetic and I like Bamco fighters. I know I'm, I'm a trash person like that. I like, like anime arena fighters, which I know is crazy because most people hate that shit. But I like it. I like the Naruto games especially. This is why I got this. But I might end up selling it. I don't know. I got it for like 20 bucks. It's pretty decent. Back to CD's nuts. It's freaking Toho Eurobeat Foo. It's the other half of High. It's uh, another CD, which uh, comes with this sparkly little thing on the front, as well as the same thing, which is uh, freaking uh, inlay, a little thing that comes with every Japanese CD. So it's the CD itself. And this one's a little bit different because this one, if you notice, let me see if I can show it. Uh, it doesn't show up on camera. But it's there. But it has like a has like a different way of being of being like pressed than the other versions. It's like has like a has like a, a distinct data layer and a distinct like non data layer, if you will. Uh, it's something where, where it doesn't pick up on camera, but trust me, it's there. This one it indeed has nine tracks, like I mentioned before, and this one probably has the better selections of tracks, if I'm being real. But I just had to get both. I mean, I got them both on Sewer Gaia, which I should have mentioned earlier. They're both very cheap compared to how much they go for on eBay. I mean, like just just for like a whole set is like hundreds of dollars. It's insane. People are really dedicated with their tohos, you know, with their with their little girl uh, uh, shoot 'em ups. But uh, yeah, I mean that's not the reason why I got it. I got it because it was free shipping, because it was cheap, because it was your beat, because it was toho, because I like all that shit combined. Especially that's that. Let's move on to another game. The next game is uh, what is this? It's Fatal Frame, the fifth one. I don't remember the name. Subtitle. I'm sure I'll put it on the screen. Whatever the subtitle is. This one's in English. I actually bought the fourth game. Funny enough, that one wasn't in English. I also bought Ultra Range. Ultra Monster Rancher Kaiju, whatever the fuck, which was also not in English. I sold both of those. One of those times I got the JoJo game in return in exchange. The other time I got something which I'll show you in a little bit. This is one of the games that I kept. It's a uh, it's a survival horror with where you take pictures. It's the one that was originally on Wii U, but then they released it physically only in Japan. You have to download a patch in order to get English, but I don't really care. It's not a big deal to me. I just like owning it physically. And uh, it's a good game. It's a really good game. It comes with a code, but I can show you it because it's most likely expired you're already used but if it isn't go ahead i don't give a shit you, you can you can have it if you want if it works speaking of that did i check if this one had a manual no manual just just text oh yeah right i forgot uh sidetrack real quick i forgot that uh these have these little nintendo packets that say like oh buy the most recent nintendo game like both of them have those both luigi luigi's mansion and uh mario kart and uh i don't know if any of the, of the future games have any sort of uh bonuses inside i think one of them does but it didn't come with the copy that i bought i'll get to it don't worry I just realized I have two games, so I might just get to it next anyway because I miscounted the amount of games. I think I have six actually instead of five. But uh, Fail Frame Made in a Blackwater, I think is what it's called. Pretty decent game, graphically very nice. I mean, what do you expect? It's like a late Wii U game. Moving on, let's move on to another uh, Switch game to make up for the fact that I only have one CD left. And that Switch game is uh, Double Dragon Gaiden Rise of the Dragons. It's a great beat em up. It's a legit great beat em up. I got it for $20. Again, most of these games I got for super 
super cheap. This one uh, was supposed to come with a sticker sheet and a poster insert. Didn't get either of those. I don't really care. It's no big deal. I probably would have put one on my wall and maybe use the stickers on my computer or whatever. Who cares? Uh, this one did not come with any of that. It, it, it didn't come with really anything except for the case and the cartridge itself. I guess it's co-developed by Arxis and Secret Base. It's published by Modus uh, physically. Uh, yeah, it's pretty freaking good. Apparently it says it's a registered trademark uh, Modus is of Maximum Games. So I guess credit to them as well. It's it's a pretty good style beat em up in the same style as like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Strategy Revenge. Uh, it's, it's got a system where it, like where it's like you can pick whatever difficulty you want. The only difference is you don't get as much coins for the bonuses, which I really appreciate as opposed to punishing you for picking lower difficulties. So I, I go with Infinite Continues because I'm not going to go like Limited Continues. That's just nearly impossible. Yeah, and it does keep your place depending on where you are. So it, it's pretty good. Uh, I love this beat em up. It's great. And it's great single player too, which helps. Uh, although, honestly, uh, Maria is the best character. The one front end facing on the box, she is the best character in the game, honestly. Okay, let's move on to the last CD and then we'll move on to the last game and maybe at the end we'll tack on the games when they arrive. First up is uh, Rashomon from Wednesday Campanella. Yes, Wednesday Campanella, one of my favorite art, uh, up and coming artists out of Japan. She did, she did have a brief stint in America with a collaboration with some crappy EDM group. I didn't bother listen, listening to it. I think her producers are much better. I don't know which which uh, release in order this is of what a Wednesday's, Wednesday's discography, but I like her vocals, I like her singing, I like her sort of pseudo rapping. I love the production. I think I think her producers are some of the best in Japan when it comes to this kind of music. Uh, and it's a and it's a pretty nice release. It makes it look like a vinyl the CD itself, and it has like your typical art right here and the sort of uh, like thing that comes with all Japanese CDs, those little inserts. It's pretty nice. I also got it from Suragaya. It was one of those things I ordered with the free shipping. And it's, it's great. I love it. I love the album. I love the music. Wednesday is freaking sick, bro. I recommend listening to her. She's great. She's also known as Sweet Yobi No Campanella in, in certain circles. But I call her Wednesday Campanella because that's, that's her Western name. Finally, we have a game which, believe it or not, is a replacement for a game that I bought previously that I might have shown in a previous video. It's Bloodstained Curse of the Moon Chronicles. It's uh, both Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 1 and 2. So I just said, fuck the limited run copy. I had some money, so I'm saying I'm buying the Japanese copy that comes with both games I said might as well because at this point I'm sick of not having both games and I wanted the cheaper Japanese copy as opposed to the to the uh, limited run copy which I fucking hate so I bought Curse of the Moon Chronicles uh, Curse of the Moon 1 is pretty good I don't know why the hell I thought it was bad I just was kind of coping over the fact that the first game was so expensive to get for a limited run but uh, the first game is great second game is even better and uh, they're great Castlevania clones they're uh, they're made by uh, NT Creates which I think is one of the best companies making retro style games today they also make Gal Gun, which is like, I don't really know about that, but uh, they're pretty good. Uh, yeah, I think overall, this is a great game to end it on. Again, might tack on some other games that come in if I feel like it. I'm not going to be editing right away anyway, so I probably will. For now, it's a temporary goodbye, so in case this actually is the end, bye-bye! Hey guys, I'm back yet again. I decided to record that extra part after all. This is my second attempt because my first attempt, I was not close enough to the mic, so a lot of stuff was peeking in and out due to my filter that I'm applying to the mic so there you go so i'm going to be unusually close to the mic because i want to make sure that everything records properly first up is the nixie wizard and believe it or not i'm going to take this off screen because i can't hold it like that the whole time it's going to hurt my arm but believe it or not with the nixie wizard there's a little bit of a story behind it so i went on mercari and believe it or not but i went on mercari there was a guy selling these nixie wizards the nixie wizard for pretty cheap i noticed he's from my town which is i'm not going to say because i don't want to dox myself he's from my town so they wanted me do Mercari local. So first I made an offer and I, then I said, uh, you know, hey, you want to do local if we do end up going through with it? He's like, well, I can't do that price. Let's adjust a little bit and I'm going for like 43 to 45 or whatever. He's like, uh, I I'm trying to do local and he's like, there's like a like a fee associated with local. Like they take a certain amount and I'm like, screw it. You know what? I'm just going to break the rules. So I just said, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pay you through Zelle if you want to meet up somewhere and I deleted the message, but he saw it and he's like, no, I'll, I'll go somewhere locally. We end up going to a local uh, pharmacy so, uh, to meet up at night. He had classes, so he, he had to show up. A little bit later, about 8:30, he ended up showing up about 8:45, 8:50. He had to put his kid away, uh, and we uh, we shared illicit soy boy material instead of drugs. I exchanged my money for a switch crack. I paid him through Zelle, got the controllers, and bada bing, bada boom. Bob's your uncle. We're pretty cool now. Uh, I don't know the guy, but I'm cool with him regardless. Anyway, I'm gonna detach these uh, Nexi joy pads, and we'll get right back to talking about 
stuff. Here it is unsheathed and put back into its cradle. If you've watched plenty of my videos, you know I love the word unsheathed. I guess this is technically resheathed, isn't it? But if that's even a word, I guess just sheathed again. Uh, this has plenty of features which I do like. I like the fact that you can wake up the Switch anytime you want. It has most controls, and most controls aren't that good. I actually did try playing them with Art of Balance, and they didn't even show up. I played it with Dusk, and it wasn't actually that good, but it was acceptable. I could get the job done in a pinch, you know? But more importantly, these have Turbo. These also have uh, two backing controllers, or two back controllers, which, by the way, another controller I ended up buying. It doesn't have back controllers, and I'm so used to back controllers that basically keep grabbing for you if they're not there anymore, because so many of my controllers have back, back buttons. Yeah, these have turbo automatically, so they're not exactly the most useful because you can't hold hold the button down with these things. So with things like Mario Kart, where you have to hold the button down, it's not exactly useful. These are supposedly supposed to work with PC. The Bluetooth on these things are so shit that basically it doesn't recognize anything in regards to anything besides Switch. I did upgrade the firmware. In fact, I, I used a USB Type-C cable to plug both of them into the computer. Before I plugged it into the computer, I pressed either R3 or L3 while plugging it in, and that worked out quite well. You know, that's, that's what I ended up getting the firmware to update just so you know if you're having trouble or updating the firmware uh yeah these things also have little gates that i replaced i replaced uh from the circles to octagons and the octagons feel nice um i actually stepped on one of the um uh circle ones so i'm probably gonna have to stick with the octagons because otherwise i think it's gonna break the action buttons for the back controllers are right next to the actual you know screenshot and home so oftentimes i end up pressing those buttons on accident the, the action buttons to replace the back buttons these don't have nfc reading but i don't really care these are pretty much everything else that I want. They also have Hall Effect joysticks, which uh, I'll, I'll buy it when I see it. I don't know if they're drift proof, but they claim they are. So we'll see about that. But if they are drift proof, I'm pretty happy about that. Let's be real. And uh, anyway, let's move on to the next controller that I bought. I sold a certain game, that being Crayon Shin Chan Summer Adventure, whatever the fuck. I sold that because I bought the uh, physical copy that's coming out in the West on the 20th through Limited Run, those greedy bastards. But yeah, I ended up... Uh, uh, buying uh, a controller with the money that I sold from it, plus some of my birthday money, which is actually how I got the Nexi Joypads as well. Uh, it's a freaking Xbox Series S slash X controller. And I've never actually owned an Xbox official branded controller since the Xbox 360. You know, I've just never, I never bought an official one. I bought third party Xbox controllers before, whether it be Xbox One or Xbox Series X, which I own both. I own a Power A one as well as a Razer one. But this is an actual official one uh, with the wireless cable capability with Bluetooth capability in fact which is super cool it has uh, the modified d-pad that these new ones have and uh, it has the buttons that I like it has uh, triggers which are pretty nice and it doesn't have back buttons which I get kind of confused about it's heavy it's solid it's green my favorite color I love green I think I think you can tell if you've seen my channel that I do love green it's my favorite shade of green as well overall I do like this controller quite a bit speaking of green this is something I forgot to show in the last part of the video this is in fact the last Timu item in the video it's a switch holder that holds switch games that's animal crossing theme that i used for that dresser right there but on top so i don't have to put it in the closet up above so i have more room for games it holds six games the actual uh um the actual fit of the games is a little bit sus uh, at this point sussy wussy if you will in fact games kind of like peel up the plastic a little bit through with with uh, this as well as the the switch uh holders that i have um up in my closet so that's awesome i love that this thing is pretty nice uh, otherwise i do like using it for uh displaying games as well as well as uh picking up games that i can just pick up and play without having to go all the way up to the shelf i mean i, I am only like 510 so the shelf is a little bit too high for me so i usually have to use a booster which i know is kind of embarrassing but whatever uh that, that's that's what you get when you're average height so yeah you have to deal with slight short people problems but you don't deal with the tall people problems either so that's kind of cool i guess maybe i want to be six foot though let's be real like on dating profiles, you know, women aren't like, you're too short. Two inches, bitch. Sh shut the fuck up. My dick's bigger than fucking two inches, so fuck you. Finally, we have two games to show. The first game we have to show is one that I got on Best Buy, uh, the website, for uh, $16. I got it shipped to my home, and it came the day after recording the last session. It's uh, Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes. It's the sequel, sort of sequel, of the Fire Emblem Three Houses. It's a Musou. 
in the same style as Hy Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity sort of sequel, if you get what I'm saying. I own the original Fire Emblem Warriors. I'm pretty happy about that. Bought both those games because both of them are pretty cheap. I mean, this one was, again, only $16, and I bought it brand new sealed. Uh, yeah, uh, there's no manual in this, nor is there a manual in the next game. There's no manual squad hype moment in any point of this video, which makes me grrr mad. No manual squad hype means mad mad. The game's your typical Musou affair. It has uh, great graphics for what it, what the style presents. Not as great as the next game I'm about to show you. Uh, it's got this sort of three houses mechanic that I don't give a shit about. Uh, I, I, can name, I can name characters, which is cool. I, I turned off permadeath. I'm not going to bother with that shit. Play with your typical difficulty. You know, just your standard difficulty. I'm not going to fucking push it too much. And we out. Just kidding. No, we're not. We got one more game. The last game to show is yet another Japanese physical, which I know I show a lot of. It's Ultra Age. This is a independently uh, developed game. It's published by Intra Games and developed by Visual Dart and Next Stage. It's, uh, it, it's a game that is in Japanese, at least the language is initially. It's it's sort of a J action hack and slash sort of game. Uh, it's got uh, voice acting, which is not the best. The graphics are pretty good, actually. They're actually really good for Switch, especially by a small team. They, they Im implement a lot of graphical effects that I do like. Got a little bit of that indie J indie jank with it with the graphics. A lot of pop in, a lot of uh, not a whole lot of slowdown, which I think is cool. But uh, again, uh, this is pretty good. Um, they're selling this physically in uh, America for on the on Amazon. I got it slightly cheaper from Ohio to just ship it to Indiana, you know, for pretty cheap. Slightly cheaper than what they're selling for on Amazon, which again, considering how long I had to wait, that's not that big of a deal. I'm, will, I'm willing to wait a little bit longer. Brand new seal as well. And uh, I think I think it was resealed though. I mean, I mean, honestly, the way it came in, it didn't have that sort of new new game smell that I was, I was expecting. On top of that, it was super easy to unseal it, which makes me think it was probably resealed. Just okay with me. I don't exactly care too much about that, but it's whatever, you know, if it was resealed, I don't care. I got over a good price anyway. It looks, looks basically new anyway. So, I mean, maybe it wasn't, maybe I'm just slandering some poor guy on, on eBay. Actually, I'm, I'm going to show one more little tiny bitty thing. This is a little bonus for all y'all. All y'all, because I'm Southern. Yeah. I have uh, these little uh, memory foam, actual memory foam uh, bits from my IEMs that I showed earlier. I got these from Amazon uh, and they're from, uh, I forget what they're called, but it's actually a pretty nice pair. They're actually real memory foam as opposed to these uh, red ones right here, which I don't think are memory foam. They're pretty stiff, honestly, compared to uh, these nice little puppies right here. I think I got scammed on Timu, let's be real. These weren't all too expensive, really. Uh, so I'm probably gonna go with these from now on. And, you, and it comes with 20 as opposed to just like three pairs. And you can get custom fit, 20 individual ones, which is 10 pairs, which is pretty cool. I got large, cause again, my ears are, I guess they're too small, I don't know. I don't know how ears work. I'm not an ear magician, like I said in the previous session. And overall, I'm pretty damn happy with everything that I've shown you today. Fuck.